Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Wild Wing Cafe at the shops at River Crossing in Macon. We're here to talk Mercer Basketball with Head Coach Bob Hoffman. Coach, only one game the way uh, the calendar worked right. out this particular week. Chattanooga came into the house on Saturday afternoon. Uh, a two-point game it ended up being. Uh, I think as long as I remember that game, I'll remember the eight-point lead with 30-something seconds to go and then a couple of bad breaks. Chattanooga seemed to gain some momentum heading into the dressing room after you had, had yeah, it all Yeah, it was uh, really bad. There was uh, We didn't guard the ball. They got right down the lane, kind of had a rub screen or a brush screen. They got a wide open layup, I called timeout, and a couple guys had fallen down on that layup. Somehow the floor stayed slippery, and um, so we'd been better off if I'd not called timeout, so that was a bad decision. As it turned out, I was hoping to try to score and get yeah, some momentum sure, back. Sure. Uh, since we had a timeout, it didn't work out that way, but it was it was nobody's fault other than yeah, mine calling yeah. the timeout. Just a bad break. Yeah, but me you called led, the timeout. You that led the for 22 thing. minutes in that game. Uh, certainly another two-point game. I know we can't just go back and dwell on those, but it is the no, fifth I game mean, this year that a total of 10 points have made a difference. Yeah, it's, uh, it's happened several times. We've been fortunate to be on the other side. A few of those, not as many as we'd like so far. Uh, I've had multiple guys I've known forever, been in coaching, that uh, sent me notes and saying, hey, it always going to It'll come around, yeah. it'll even yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, that's a bunch of garbage. Man. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> until, I, I, until we win five, I, I don't points. want to hear that. I think the older I get, the yeah. harder it is to uh, take a loss. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the younger I was, or had been at yeah. some point, I was young. I don't know when that was, but some point, some point I was young and it was a little easier to take losses. I still didn't like losing, but it yeah. uh, seemed like you could bounce back a little quicker. Uh, but you kind of grind right now yeah. on those in your mind, trying to figure out why I call timeout and that four point swing yeah. uh, all the way to any of those plays that were down the stretch. Uh, at the counter of that, on Wednesday, we beat Sanford. I hadn't thought about that game one time. Yeah. And we yeah. won by three, and it could have been the exact same yeah. scenario, uh, basically, and it wasn't. Um, but uh, I could go all the way back to the national championship game and NAI days and remind myself of yeah, a sure. play and a call and a vivid point of losing a game by one possession, a national championship game, and I can still recall that. So that's bad. That's, I mean, that's a great recall, great but recall. sometimes you'd rather uh, have amnesia, I think. A couple of guys I wanted to point out, Coach. Rashad Lewis came in for 10 minutes. He had three steals, an assist, and five points. Really continues to develop for you. Yeah, he should have played more. Uh, he played really good. We need to play Jordan and him a little more together, um, especially against teams that have smaller guards uh, like they do. They have, yeah. they have a couple of smaller guys that like to drive the ball. Rashad's really figuring out his niche on this team. Uh, the assistant coaches have done a good job with him. And, you know, a lot of credit goes to Rashad because I've been on him pretty hard and yep. he, he's matched that intensity and now he's one of the stronger voices on the team and he's running the scout team. He's, he's bringing energy to practice and doing a lot of great things for our program and our team. And I, I think he can still yep. get to play. He still hasn't got comfortable shooting the ball like I believe he can. Uh, I believe he will before it's over. Also, we'll mention Jalen Stowe had 11 minutes, had seven points and assists, two rebounds. Had a, did a, a great job one time when the pressure was there. Took that ball to half court and just ran down, penetrated the defense. Yeah, he actually he did two big time layups, and the third one when he spun and got fouled, I thought he was going to make the layup and it was going to be an and one. Uh, there's no, unquestionably nobody on our team in my mind works any harder than he does on his game. Uh, he got a, had a huge setback at the beginning of the year, breaking his thumb, his yeah, wrist, yeah. his hand, his brain, everything was broken. Uh, he had a cast and then he couldn't do anything for four weeks and then his flexibility has been awful yeah. and he's dropped and fumbled and now passes, now he's finally getting them all back yeah. and we're excited about his intensity. I mean, he could be an energy guy for us. And he definitely was in that game. Guy who had nearly a double double, 10.7 rebounds, was Desmond Ringer. We're going to feature him this week. What do you say we go to campus and talk to Des? Let's talk to Des. All right, let's go back to campus. What about to it, campus. Des? We'll do that when we take a, come back after a break with more inside Mercer basketball. Get a rebound. 
As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice, sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Service department is out of sight. You can pull in the, the uh, garage over there and they will meet you before you cut the engine off. They know you by name. How can I help you, Mr. Ross? I can't, you know, get that kind of service no place else but here at Five Star. All of my friends, I always tell them what good service you get at Five Star. I love to talk and I like to tell the truth. For over 20 years, Mercer has relied on Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Their team of physicians keeps players on the court. Forsyth Street Orthopedics and Ortho Georgia have merged together into one practice, and we're stronger than ever with 26 physicians and five regional offices. As a graduate of Mercer and a partner of Ortho Georgia, we are proud to sponsor and take care of Mercer athletes. Ortho Georgia, getting better together. Go Bears! We're back on campus at Hawkins Arena. We talked today with Des Ringer on our player spotlight. Full name is Desmond. I like to abbreviate his Des. Des is a big guy. You got to talk quick when you're talking to a guy that guy up. But uh, Des, out of McDonough, Georgia. Tell us, years ago, growing up at McDonough, we know you played a lot of basketball, but what else did you do that made you the person you are today? Um, well, my mom and dad uh, took me to church a lot. So church was one of the biggest things and, uh, that I grew up on and something I still do every day, every sure. Sunday and stuff yeah. like that. Um, uh, I grew up playing the drums really? at church. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of my hobbies I like to do outside of basketball is okay. play the drums. And I kind of dilly dally with the piano a little bit. Yeah. I can play a couple songs, but I just need to get the foundations right. And I plan on doing that one of these summers down here when wow. I don't have a whole lot of stuff to do in schools like that. So. so the next time I hear a little rhythm coming off the back of the bus, I'll know where it originates. Yeah, it's definitely. you on the back of the seat back there. Yeah, it'll be me. It'll be me back <laughs> there making a little rhythm. All right, tell us about moving on to Eagles Landing. You had a great career at Eagles Landing, a state championship in mm -hmm. 2013. You had a double-double in the title game, I believe. Tell us about your experience, how you enjoyed high school and ultimately winning that state title. High school was great. Um, I came into a school that didn't have a great basketball program coming in. Um, and since my freshman year, I started varsity and I've always had an impact on the team. And we made the state tournament every year I've been there. Yep. I think when I started at Eagles Landing, that was the first year we made a state tournament in school history. Yeah. And yep. when I finished, it was the first state title in uh, the county history. Yeah. So it was just fun developing a program. It was fun um, building a tradition that's still going on with basketball at Eagles Landing to this day. So when you go back home to visit on the weekend, are you still a local hero? Uh, something like that. <laughs> um, all the little kids in the program look up to me now because yeah. yeah. they get to see the, the banners on the wall and the, the little mural we got on the floor at school. So yeah. it's, it's a big deal. All right, and then after that, uh, you went on to uh, South Carolina for a year or so to walk us through that transition of going to South Carolina and how you eventually ended up here at Mercer. Well, the transition from high school to college was just big, period. Um, I didn't know uh my way around campus it was just any it's, it's the same as any transition from high school to college from uh, a, a guy being a senior in high school yeah. to a guy being a freshman in college um, basketball was tough and um i just wanted to be in a place where i knew what i was going to get from my coaches i knew what i was going to get from school yeah. and mercer was that place coach hoffman was uh recruiting me since i've been in the eighth grade they offered me since i've been yeah. in the eighth grade yeah so i already knew what i was getting from them if I were to come back to Mercer yeah. and um, I want to be closer to home to my family and this was the place to be. I understand. All right. Uh, as we watch college basketball, those of us that are fans, radio announcers, whatever, we watch the games here, we watch games on television. We see the guys making the three point shots and getting all the attention out there. But in the post is where the battle is going on. Mm -hmm. Tell us how difficult night in and night out playing in that paint. It's difficult playing in the post, man. Uh, every possession, you got to give up your body. You always banging. We always doing the dirty work that a lot of people don't see. And uh, it's, I love it. It's fun for me. I love getting down in there, being dirty and, and uh, snatching rebounds and sealing for my teammates. I feel like without us, a lot of the things that they get wouldn't be 
it wouldn't happen. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it's it's a it's a little unsung hero, but I, I'm ready to take that role. I like that role. And then it's not often a team has two more post players the size of an Andrew Fischler and a JJ Ngonga for you to battle against every day in practice. Yes, yes. And that's been a great job. They they, they do a great job and they don't even know it preparing me. We also prepare each other for the high major teams that we play this year. Um, Fish could be a high major, but yeah. he could probably start on any team in the conference. Being 7-1 with the skill he has, JJ is the same thing. So uh, we all just make each other better, and, it, and it's been paying off for us this year. Let's talk more about those high-profile opponents. We played several of those in the uh, non-conference portion of the schedule, but with you starting out at South Carolina, uh, that's not uh, frightening to you. You've seen the guys with the names on their chest that mm -hmm. recognizable, so really, just like a couple of other guys on the team, that doesn't make you back down at all from ready to play a basketball game. Yeah, not at all. Um, at South Carolina, I've played with the best, not even in South Carolina, but playing high major AAU basketball. Yeah. Played against the Jaleel Okafors and uh, Jordan Mickeys, who played for the Boston Celtics. I played against all those guys who are in the league right now. And um, it's fun. I just love to compete. All right, as we sit on the floor of Hawkins Arena, every player has a routine to get ready for a game on game day. What are your routines? What prepares you to tip it off here in Hawkins Arena? Well, I got to thank uh, Jonathan Howard. He's the one that gets that pregame meal from Cheddar's every <laughs> every uh, home game. So I definitely eat that. I take a little nap, and then I pray before I come to the game. And then I just do the normal uh, moment routine that coaches take us through. I yeah. just try to stay calm and not get too hyped before the game and yeah. so I can just go out and do my thing. All right, you mentioned how important your church role is and uh, those things. What other hobbies do you have, Des? When you're not on the basketball court, what do you enjoy doing? Uh, I love playing cards. If you ask uh, Ryan Johnson, our teammate, a newcomer, we got really close just off our connection, just loving to play cards, spades, tongue, just stuff like that. Um, I just genuinely love having a good time with my family and friends. Yeah. Just tripping out, laughing, and uh, spending time with them is one of my favorite things to do. Occasionally, Des, uh, we get a chance to look at somebody that is really excited to be where they are at that point in their life. Is that you this time in your life, being a basketball player here on this basketball team playing in this arena? Definitely, it's, it's, it's something that I've always dreamed of doing. And not only that, um, I'm becoming, I'm really, really close to graduating and getting my degree. So just the combination of both of these things together is, is really a dream come true. Take that one step forward once you get your degree, once you finally hang those big sneakers up, uh, what do you want to do uh, professionally uh, the rest of your life? Well, I've been looking into this um, career and communication is definitely, it's becoming a um, communications outreach specialist. Uh -huh. And basically what they do is they kind of throw events to kind of bridge the corporate world and the community. And it's a way to give back to the community as well as getting the corporate world's product out there in the community at the same time. And I feel like I'll be good yeah. at that. I, I like talking to people. I like uh, bridging the gap between people. So yeah. I think it's something I really enjoy to do. You mentioned uh, the influence on younger folks uh, from your high school days. Today, as you're in your junior year playing here at Mercer, a lot of young folks watch you in the arena. What advice would you give to young people? Maybe if they don't want to play college basketball, but being successful in life, at this point in your life, as a, somebody they look up to, what advice would you give young folks? I tell them to have a plan. Um, my dad tells me all the time, if you don't have a plan, you're like a boat in the ocean, just going with the waves and the wind. You need to know where you can, what you want to do, and you need to figure out a plan to get that done. And once you get that, just work hard. Stay focused on your plan. Um, you can do anything you want to do, but if you don't put the time in, yeah. if you don't um, take the time to actually research it, you won't get it done. So just have a plan and then have a way to execute and then focus on it. All right, speaking of a plan, Des, we've got some huge conference games coming up. I know you feel good that this team is coming together. There's some great nights ahead in conference play before we finish the season out. Definitely. Yes, All right, sir. That's Desmond Ringer visiting with us today. We'll be going right back up to Wild Wing. We'll be joining Bob Hoffman and talk more inside Mercer basketball. I have purchased uh, five Jeeps here at Five Star. And my sister-in-law from Florida actually came up and purchased uh, Jeep here. The way you're treated, the uh, satisfaction, the service, just the overall good experience. And, you know, for me to come back that many times speaks for itself. Right.
speeds increasing to 4G LTE. Brain upgrading to a quad core processor. Precognitive intelligence with Google Now complete. Introducing Droid DNA by HTC. It's not an upgrade to your phone, it's an upgrade to yourself. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where welcome back to wild wing cafe in macon georgia we're joined by Rick Howard, the uh, owner of Wild Wing. He's been a great supporter of ours for several years now. When, when, when did you open up here, Rick? We opened in uh, August 2008. Yeah, and how did you settle in on having a Wild Wing Cafe in Macon, Georgia? Well, I, I was sold on it. Somebody sold me on okay. it. I, did, I didn't uh, actually pick it up, so I can't take credit for that. But uh, I, was, I was a Dunkin' Donuts guy. Uh, okay. had a, sold my stores in Augusta. Um, had a wild wing across from me, spent a lot of time in there, and just really got to like the, the, you know, just not the brand, but the people in it, and uh, just looking for something to do. Well, I know seven years ago, we started a TV show that we're doing right now, and you were very instrumental in us being able to make this happen. We're so thankful and grateful for that. Talk about your involvement with sports, because I know you're involved in a lot of different things here in middle yeah. Georgia, making a big impact. Well, I mean, sports is obviously a big, a big part of our brand. It's not, I hate to get pigeonholed right into right. A, a sports bar because that's not exactly what we are. We, we obviously have the TVs and, and so forth that you can see. Any kind of game, it's, it's going to be on here. But we're a little bit more. We're on the stage, so there's a lot of music, that kind of thing. But sports, uh, as far as Mercer goes, uh, we wanted to, to be the place for, for Mercer athletics, whether it was football, basketball, baseball, whatever it was. Um, so that's... That was kind of my thinking about uh, sponsor. I didn't want to go into a competitor, or somebody right. else down the street. I know we're not, you know, on campus, but uh, a lot of alumni live out this way. Mm, they so, do. You know, we we wanted to uh, to tie into the the people that are spending money with us. You know, we would give it back to the community. So we don't. Matter of fact, a large portion, probably more than fifty percent of my budget, is spent with with Mercer, uh, whether it's whether it's this show or 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 Coach Lamb show or right. or just advertising in general. Uh, yeah, with the athletic department in general. I know I know you're you enjoy sports. I know you get to come out a little bit from yep. time to time. You're busy. Yep. You almost being uh, having a store like this or anything comparable, you have to be married to it. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can't it you can't get away very often. Well, you know, my plan was to to move down here, get an apartment, get it up and running for about a year and then I'd commute back and forth from Augusta. Well it's yeah. Now I'm close to getting married and bought a house here and I'm not going anywhere. So that, well, uh, that, that plan, it, it didn't <laughs> pan out. I mean, it, it's, you're, you just gotta be here. I mean, I got great people. I've got, yeah. got my general manager's been here since day one. One of my bartenders been yeah. here since day one. Uh, a lot of those guys. So they're, they're literally here every day. What, what have you seen over your time here as sports has kind of grown in middle Georgia? What, what, what have, what's grabbed you or what do you, what have you seen? Happen. Well, I, I mean, Mercer, I mean, it, it's really Mercer. Uh, you know, I, I was at Georgia Southern. Uh, That's okay, we'll but, let you be that way. Yeah, uh, <laughs> years ago when it was, you know, really small. Uh -huh. I look at it now and I kind of... Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I kind of equate Mercer to that. I mean, it, it looks like it's, you know, it, I mean, in, in the demographics where Mercer is, it has the potential to be really big. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we're betting, betting on Mercer pretty much. Well, we're thankful for your sponsorship, your involvement with this show and everything you do for Mercer Athletics. Rick Howard, the owner of Wild Wing Cafe, he makes this show happen. We're grateful. We'll be right back. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where Over 
3,000 new cars, over 1,500 used cars. Come experience the difference. Hey, all you Bear fans, I know we're having a great time at this game. It's exciting, fun. We're getting after it. If you want to have a good time after this game, you need to go over to Margarita's in Mercer Village. They have amazing Mexican food, and they're going to take care of you. All kinds of specials. You can find what you want. Look at my body. It's working good for me. Come on over and check them out at Mercer Village Margarita's. Back at Wild Wing Cafe with more Inside Mercer Basketball, Coach Bob Hoffman. Let's talk about, we only had one game this past week. Let's talk about first our Sonic Player of the Week. Well, I, I think we're going to go with Desmond Ringer. He had 10 points, uh, didn't miss from the field, had seven rebounds, had a, had a big game, uh, played some really good defense, yeah. played a great position defense. Uh, Really, Against really, a great yeah, player. Yeah, he, he did a good job. Did yep. a really good Against job. Against Justin Toyo. Yeah. All right, Coach, what about our Marco delivery of the week? Well, it's, uh, we went with a forward. He had four assists to one turnover, uh, made some great passes. He's continuing to work on that part of his game. That's Stefan Jokes. Uh, and I, I think if he can continue to find the weaknesses in the defense and where they're uh, rotating. Uh, I think we can find some easy shots, and he did that for us against Chattanooga. And when Steph's energized, everybody gets yeah, energized. Yeah, that's right, no doubt about All it. All right, the uh, making occupational medicine inside look at uh, the SOCON uh -huh. standings uh, as we head into play this week. Coach, we knew Chattanooga and ETSU would be contenders. Everybody thought they would, but as we're going to talk in just a moment, our next opponent, UNCG's making a run as well. They are actually tied with those other two teams with only one loss in conference play. Yeah, somebody told me this will be our fourth game in a row against the number one team in the league. It will be. Yep. Uh, which, uh, that's pretty hard to do. Yeah. I don't know yeah. if you can do that very often. <laughs> but, but Chattanooga is a great team. Uh, we, had, we, we had multiple opportunities. Crowd was fantastic. They were into the game. I thought our guys played with great energy. Uh, desire, determination was good. We weren't able to get to the end with more points than them, and uh, that's what you have to do in those kind of games is find a way to get it done. And, uh, but I, I love how we just stayed in there and we kept fighting no matter what the situation was. And uh, we got off to, as we mentioned earlier, we got off to that really good lead. We had an eight-point separation, and that would have been fantastic if we could have held that going into yeah. halftime. But if we didn't and we didn't get it done, uh, We'll, uh, we know we get to play them at least one more time, yeah. and we'll, hopefully we'll get one more after that. But you've been telling us for days that everyone better uh, have a lookout for UNCG, a very talented team. Right. No doubt about it. They've got uh, multiple guys that can play at a uh, high level. White, uh, to me, a potential player of the year. He hit five threes last week at East Tennessee State, and he'd only hit three all year, and wow. he hit five in one game. Yeah. So. Uh, I don't know if you guard him or you don't guard him, but if he's hitting five, you probably better yeah. guard him because he's an unbelievable post-up guy. Yeah. Uh, he's got great hands. His, his dad played for the Mavericks a long time ago, and he, he's uh, from Frisco, Texas, and uh, has had a great career there, and, and he's playing at a high level. But they have multiple guys. Baldwin's yeah. playing really good. And then the leading scorer, uh, Francisco. Alonzo. Alonzo. Mm -hmm. It's his last name. Is unbelievable. Yeah. That guy, he's so slippery and and uh, he he has a lot. I mean, he has got a lot of quick feet. Yep. Sometimes he takes too many steps, but he does it so fast they can't see it. <laughs> and he shoots the ball really quick, yep. and and he and he's shooting over ninety percent from the free throw line. Now we're about to travel to Greensboro right. to play these guys, but they're three and zero, unbeaten on the road in SoCon play this right. far. Right. No, no doubt about it. I, I know we're playing the. Coliseum there where they've had a lot of great games including the ACC tournaments been yeah. in that building many times uh, great venue for basketball tough and tough place to play we've we've had some good games in there and we're gonna have to shoot it well we got a lot of guys from North Carolina I know they're excited about playing in front of some home folks so it should be a lot of fun and then we'll uh, finish that road trip up on Saturday coach when we come back to Cullowee uh, last year we spent an extra day in Cullowee with the snow oh hopefully not this year maybe it'll be 70 degrees like it's been in Macon. It was snowing and <laughs> I couldn't even get my walk on. It was, <laughs> no. it was uh, some gloves. I tried to walk the Waffle House. It wasn't open though was it? <laughs> yeah it, it was. was probably the yeah, only thing I was, was able open. to get to the Waffle House but they didn't have no food I don't think <laughs> because the trucks couldn't get in uh, but they had iced tea. There you go. So That's that, all that, that was a, that was a good thing. Matters. Yeah but uh, Western uh, coach 
Hunter's one of the best coaches in the country, yeah. won nine million games and been there for about 10 million years. So uh, we, we know what we're getting into. We had a great game with them last year, lost in overtime. A double overtime, I guess it was, was it not? Yeah. Was it overtime yeah, or double it overtime? It was overtime. It was overtime for sure. Yeah. I was thinking it was double overtime. Yeah. Uh, I've slept since then. But anyway, it, it was, we should never got back in the game. We had a fantastic rally, and then we had an opportunity to win it. Had a strange thing happen with the, the horn, horn yeah. buzzer. The 30 clock, second shot was clock was tied clock. to the game yep. clock. But uh, we're, uh, that, those two games, we need, we need to find a way to get them. Uh, yeah. we, we got a little momentum at Samford. Gave back that momentum, I felt like, uh, even though we played really well against Chattanooga, now we go back on the road. Uh, we got a chance here to get on a big run, and uh, that would be really good for this team and the energy and the mindset of what we could do as we finish up this season. Well, I know you mentioned earlier as we started the show, Coach, that uh, losing narrowly didn't really make you feel any better, but it does show you're that close as we almost have played everyone after this road trip, just one more game. We will have played everybody once. So it just goes to show just a shot here, shot there. It could be a great finish run for these guys coming down the street. Yeah, and there's no doubt about it. I mean, the hope's still there. We believe we can do great things. We haven't yet, uh, but we've been right there. And what you've got to do is you've got to keep working hard every day. You've got to keep getting better. You've got to keep uh, focusing on your individual skills. You've got to be mindful of what we can do better as a team and as a coaching staff, keep everybody pointing in the right direction, which is forward and not backwards. And uh, that's not always an easy task, but uh, our guys have done a really good job of listening and being excited about the next game. Your theme for this year was stir. It's yeah. time to really we got, we got to stir, stir it up, deep. baby. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we got to stir it up. As long as we're not having to stir up any snow ice cream. There you go. I don't want to be stirring any snow ice cream. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's show. Thanks for being with us. We'll be back again next week with more Inside Mercer Basketball.